Several things to talk to y'all. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, do you know the password to Wi-Fi? I think, okay, hang on a second. Um, I want to say it's one Apple exclamation point. That's one of them. Now, there are a couple of different options. Isn't there the one, there's one that also says something like, oh, log, me log me in. Yes. Is that for the personal, Cato personal? Nice. That's the one you probably want to use. I'm thinking of Cato Apple, which would probably also work, but. All right, you guys. Um, so, I want to talk about two major things today. One is the Glass Menagerie paper and your, your outline that you have in front of you right now. And then the other one, Gracie, right? Okay. Yes, all right, I'm wondering if I need to spread y'all out at all. Gracie, do me a big favor. Go sit back in that desk. I hate to kind of put you in the back, but I think it's probably the safest route, okay? Um, given that my kids are social and they have been quarantined, so we won't keep you in school. All right. Um. So anyway, the, the first major thing I want to talk about is the Glass Menagerie paper. You've got your outline in front of you. you. Um, Gracie, did you turn in your cards hard copy last week? Yes, ma'am. Okay, they're right behind you. You want to grab those and then grab that sheet too, okay? All right, and then I also want to begin talking to you about Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Did you guys bring a copy of The Crucible with me? Please, or with you, please tell me yes, because we're gonna be looking at that today. Mitchell, I can tell by your eyes, you don't have it with you. Yeah. So, um, you just have to listen really carefully today. We're not gonna get too far into it yet, but we're starting, okay? All right, but first, but first, all right, for this week, it's a short week, okay? But let me show you a couple of things. When you go all the way down on my home page, you are going to go to week three. That is this week. And all these things you're going to need to take care of. You've got vocabulary cards six through ten that you will just, I mean, technically they're really supposed to be due today, but it's the only day I see you this week. So you guys turn them in virtually. I'll be happy with that. All you guys got to do is lay your cards out. They're going to be numbered 6 through 10. You're going to take a picture of them, upload the picture. Okay? All right? You'll be able to get lots and lots of words from Glass Menagerie and The Crucible, for that matter. Okay? You have a bio on Arthur Miller that you were supposed to look at yesterday, though about 10 o'clock last night, one of my kids said, I can't find it. And I thought, oh, Lord, Canvas strikes again. Not really. It was really me. I, like, didn't click a button that I was supposed to. But the bio on Arthur Miller, which you actually have in front of you, is also available through Canvas. And you are to, of course, read it and, you know, highlight some stuff. But we're going to be doing that in day, today for my in-class folks. My folks at home will have to do that on their own, okay? you got a couple of journals. Hopefully, you wrote your journal yesterday. you got another one tomorrow. And then, let's see. Okay. Let's talk about what to do this week. I have all this kind of broken down in what's happening, you know, every day, right? Um, I have Zooms set up for my all virtual kids every Friday, but guys, I, I want you to log in if you have questions, okay? Like if there's anything that you're working on and you're like, oh, I'm a little confused, not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing here, that's a great opportunity to ask those kind of questions. And I usually have a meeting at nine and then a meeting at maybe 9.30 and then a meeting at 11. And you can choose which one you wanna to go to. It's not required of my face-to-face, -face, my hybrid kids. But you know, if you've got questions, it would be a good, a good thing to do, okay? It's an easy way to, to ask those without having to text me and all that kind of stuff, okay? All right, now, Here's what we're doing about this essay. You've got the outline that we're going to look at today. And um, I want y'all to essentially do two things this week. And it's already Wednesday. So, um, I mean, well, let me just kind of back out of that. The first priority that you have is to get the first draft of your Glass Menagerie essay done. Okay. And I do want to peer edit those. The peer edits on the outlines for my virtual kids 
didn't work as I thought they would. It, I had a couple of kids that were able to figure out how to peer edit each other's work, but um, I'm gonna have to sit down with a virtual kid, or not a virtual kid, but somebody in, from a, a student perspective and kind of see what it asks them to do because evidently it didn't automatically prompt folks to go into another person's paper and ask questions. So I went through and I made comments on all the outlines that were submitted virtually. I did not make comments on y'all's because I figured I was probably gonna see you here, although I may have done yours, Carl. I have to double check, okay? So I'm gonna come around and look at those and make sure that y'all are on track, all right, today in class. The first draft. I know that I can get you guys to submit the first draft through Turnitin, and it will prompt you to do a peer edit, okay? So it'll assign you anonymously one other student's paper, probably from this class. It may be a virtual kid's paper. It may be somebody that's sitting in this room, right? And you will read through their paper and there will be questions that you will look at that will prompt your responses so that you can help make sure that they are on track, okay? So in order for this to work, y'all are gonna have to upload the first draft of your Turnitin, sorry, of your Glass Menagerie essay through Turnitin, okay? And speaking of Turnitin, y'all, I have like 20 kids who never submitted their, their memoir okay that scares me that scares me and it's kids that i've seen that i know are like on the ball right it's not all slackers i mean something's going on so it very well may, may be that you thought you submitted it but it didn't go through it may be that you are like you know unsure about how to actually enroll in my my turn it in class for first hour so you've got to take care of that Okay, I would strongly recommend double checking, make sure you're enrolled in the Turnitin class for first hour, get that uploaded like ASAP, okay? And if it's in by like, I don't know, this evening, maybe midnight, then I probably won't even take points off for you, okay? But you gotta get it in, you gotta get it in. Y'all, this year, I know y'all are like, ugh, this sucks all the fun out of school, you know. We're left with all the hard part and none of the fun stuff. It's it's like that times 10 for us, for the teachers, because we are so busy like setting things up and trying to plan that trying to even catch up on the grading is almost impossible at this point. So if you turn stuff in late, especially big points like, you know, your essays, I can't promise I'm gonna get to it. I mean, honestly, I may not have time to get to it. And if I don't get to it, then it's a zero. And I'm a softie, I hate doing that. I don't wanna be the bad guy, but y'all have to pull your weight. You know what I mean? Like you just, you just have to, okay? All right, moving on. I'm gonna stop fussing and leave the student view. I wanted to take a second and show you all these quizzes that you guys did in class the other day, it, or not in class, it was actually, um, you did it virtually, but commas with introductory elements. Y'all, the whole point of my quizzing that this, quizzing on this, was to make sure that your writing, you know, is formatted correctly, okay? Like, do you know the difference between a clause and a phrase? I mean, for this assignment, you needed to know. That's why I put it in the instructions so you could kind of review it, even if you hadn't had a chance to read every single page that I told you to over those um, comma rules and such. But do I need to know that you know the difference between a clause and a phrase? I mean, honestly, not necessarily. But what I do need to know is that you can recognize when you have commas with introductory elements, okay? Because at this age, there's something about that particular comma rule that just seems to throw people. I know that some of y'all struggle with punctuation, but if you can like nail this comma rule, you are gonna do so much better on like the punctuation grammar side of your papers. So for instance, 
Um, here is what I put in the instructions. Commas with an introductory clause must be separated with a comma. So after I went to the store, comma, I stopped by um, to get groceries. It's got I, it's got went, it's got the subject and the verb that makes it a clause. Here's an intro phrase. After shopping, I stopped by to drop off groceries. And then finally, intro words too. Anytime you like start a sentence with a name, that's an intro word. Um, if a name of someone that you're addressing is actually in the middle of a sentence, then you separate it with commas. Like, hello, comma, John, comma, it's nice to see you, period. Okay? Um, or at the beginning, Emily, comma, thank you for filming this because that must be a pain. Got it? All right. And then, of course, you know, single words, yes, comma, I'd love to go to the, you know, movies or whatnot if we could go to the movies now. Um, all right. More importantly than all of that, you've got to know how to set up your quotes. Y'all, I don't know that you've heard this term, but if you had Miss Springer last year, she probably called them orphan quotes. Anybody have Miss Springer last year? So do you remember that she would call quotes that were just kind of stuck in the middle of the paper orphan quotes, or am I making this up? I think you're making that up. Am I really? It's <laughs> quite possible. Did she fuss at you if you didn't have some kind of lead in or your quote, well, okay, well, good. That's the basics. I call them naked quotes just because I think it's kind of funny to say naked. Plus it's, you know, makes you remember them. You always have to have some kind of lead in with the quote or you have to have parts of the quote woven into your own sentence structure. And then you also have to have the citation. So here is a scene. As Tom describes his memories of Laura, yada, 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 he urges her to quote, blow out your candles for now the days, the world's lit by lightning. And this happens on page 97. Couple of things. If there is an exclamation point or a question mark inside the quote, you leave it. That's part of the quote. Period always goes on the outside of parentheses though, always. Biggest problems I see are folks putting the period on the inside. That's just a technical glitch, but it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. And I'm gonna hammer you if you get that wrong. So you just gotta flat memorize that format. By the way, I don't need Williams in the parentheses here because other than the outside quote, all the quotes that you've used have come from the same guy. If you're quoting from several different sources, that's when you need to put the last name and the page number in, okay? All right, so I want to skip down to question six, which was the one that was worth eight points, okay? And it gives you a scenario, right? It says, okay, Jim and Laura dancing, they break the unicorn. And Laura very graciously says, it's, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, it's okay, you know, not that big a deal. So if you were gonna turn this into a correctly formatted quote with lead in it and all that good stuff, and if I were you, I would write this down as an example, another example, maybe on your outline, but like on the side so it doesn't, mesh with your stuff. I don't want it to confuse you. And then Emily, I'll let you get it later. I'll let you get it okay. from someone. Okay. So let's say when Laura and Jim are dancing, they break the unicorn and Laura, I'm going to put graciously, even though adverbs are not my favorite, graciously tells Jim, and then I gotta like, I'm just gonna copy and paste the um, quote. Okay. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. I'll imagine he had an operation and it'll make him feel less freakish. Because there is an exclamation point in there, I'm gonna leave it. Then I wanna say this was page 86 period at the end, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is copy this so that y'all can all see it. Uh, okay, 
And I'm also gonna like put it in a Google Doc larger so y'all can actually like read it. So give me a second, I'll do that. Ooh, actually, let's do it here. This was the stuff I did yesterday. That's a different one. There we go. So take a second and jot that down maybe in the margins of your um, paper just so you have one more example of what um, you know these lead-ins and citations are supposed to look like. And Emily will get it from someone in a second, okay? Just keep filming. Okay, all my virtual kids at home who are watching this, thank you for actually watching because some folks aren't watching these at all. <laughs> and then let me go ahead, I'm gonna move ahead so Emily can get her stuff done. Um, there are gonna be two videos today, this one that deals with the paper and then another one that deals with um, Arthur Miller and the Crucible. But I did wanna remind you that you've got to have an opening quote for your outline and eventual paper and you need to check your outlines. Some of y'all haven't done them yet, and um, those that did, I have comments on them that you definitely want to address before you move into the first draft. Okay, thank you. Bye. Now you can turn it off. Okay.